Hey everybody, Frank Ellaridi here with my two best friends, Kat Graham and Bryant Wood. And of course, you can probably see on the screen, Caroline Corey is with us. <laughs> oh my God. So um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you're you're watching it either on Caroline's channel or on my YouTube channel, <laughs> Frank <Yeah>. Ellaridi. <laughs> And um, if you don't know yet, if you're following either of us on social media, then you know we started a brand called Modern Nirvana, which we're really excited about. And it is um, basically the same as my mission statement always has been, which is to be a catalyst for change in people's lives. And if you're familiar with my YouTube channel, then you have seen a lot of the pineal gland activation things and the remote viewing, the blindfold reading. And Caroline has, has a documentary out called Superhuman. It's on iTunes. It's so good. So incredible. One of the, so good. I've never seen anything like it. And one of the top rated documentaries on YouTube, on, on, sorry, on iTunes. And what's cool is that you've kind of taken what I've already shown, but in a laboratory setting, which is really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much you guys it's so fun to see you because uh the last time i saw you it was at your event the modern nirvana event and frank you were glowing uh it was so much fun to do that event that's the aloe vera <laughs> yeah, it was so fun and cat you know when when she spoke on, uh on stage like i could feel the sincere heart, you know, of wanting to talk about consciousness and spirituality. It was so, yeah. so, so nice and warming. Yeah, so and Bryant, he probably doesn't remember. He's not listening, but. <laughs> we're just dealing with, we're at my friend's house and his dog. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, Bryant, he gave me like the longest hug ever. And I just um, so. We'll eventually figure that out. Don't worry. Keep going. Uh, I was literally like floating in this ball of love. Oh, I mean, cool. each I one of you, like, I know. I was like, know that's like they call like sometimes when I don't let go, they call it the struggle cuddle. Somehow. Yeah, oh. it's like so fun. And um, all this to say that you guys separately you have this amazing energy, and now you're coming together like this trio. I feel like. Oh my God, this like extra dose of beautiful energy. So this is so, so cool. I can't wait to hear more what you're going to do uh, with all of this. But yeah, coming together has been like the most powerful thing any of us have done. Yeah, it's crazy. We really just wanted to bring um, spirituality and awareness and consciousness to, to people that young people, especially that really need it. And um, we've always been that way. And Bryant kind of came into our lives recently. And we just really wanted to do something. Um, it started really just as a conference. And now we really, you know, just launched a whole company um, focusing on that and doing really great content for it. So excited for everyone to see more like, stuff on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. yeah, that's why this is so exciting also because you understand the movie that I made. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on a deep, deep alley. <laughs> yeah. And so um uh, I I think that's what I tried to do with this film is bring it to the next level. I mean, we've been hearing about the mind affects the body, positive thinking is good for you, you know, all that good stuff. But I feel like it's only been talking, you know, like more, more theories. And so in the film, I felt like I needed to really bring validation and show, not just to say, show measurable effects you know of hey, how what were some of the schools what were some of the uh, some of you was it harvard and princeton stanford i can't remember but they were impressive schools that you were at oh my god harvard ucla stanford i mean these are top-notch scientists i would talk about credibility right yeah. and studying the phenomenon so i said you know let's not just talk about theories we we, we get that by now we want to demonstrate so let's do on camera experiments to show how the mind can look at water intend for the pH of water to go up and it does go up. You know, I mean, we see the, the stuff go up. It's not crazy stuff out there. This is real science. And so that's why I feel like this film is, is bringing all that new material, you know? 
Mm -hmm. Let's watch a clip. Can we show people a little bit of what we're talking about if they don't, if they have no idea what we're talking about? Yeah. Uh, do you want to show? Well, I mean, so we did many types of experiments, you know, remote viewing to demonstrate how you can see that things, one. you can perceive things. You like that one? No, you know what? Maybe the blindfold reading because that leads into remote viewing. Okay, let's go so first with the blindfold. Yeah. Yeah, that one yeah. Did, yeah. It's possible, yeah. And so just a quick kind of intro about that. So um, so we did several experiments and then um, to demonstrate how the mind can literally bypass the body and consciousness can tell your brain to do what it wants it to do. And when I saw the blindfold kids, which you also covered, we'll talk about that. You know, I was like, there's no way. I mean, when you first see it, you think, okay, it's a magic trick. There's no way you can get your consciousness to make your brain see without your eyes. Exactly. And so I wanted to investigate it. I wanted to really research it and go see the kids and the adults as well and see scientifically, well, can we really measure what these blindfolds are doing? I mean, is this real or is there anything that's fake? And of course, it, it turned out to be incredibly powerful. So I can show you a clip and then we can. Yeah, I love that. Cool, cool. Okay. Our first stop is in the UK, where we encounter children who are using blindfolds to access their superhuman abilities. We're gonna play some games. Uh, put your blindfolds on for me, please. Ready? Justin. Tell me what's on this card. Teacup. And now tell me what's on this card. Oh, tiger. Peter Patter. The rain was trapping in the windows and the wind was banging. When my son um, started to read and I saw him reading. Our day out is ruined. They kind of shine. It's just amazing. Practicing vibravision gives us the ability to access our sensors and to perceive those vibrations and then convert it into a usable mental image we call mindset. Red, yellow, blue, yellow, orange, blue, green. Yeah. <laughs> we can see the unseen to do things that are thought of as impossible. Let's find the Lay's brand. Okay, there. there we are. There we we're are. Back. <laughs> it's so cool. It's as just... many times as we've seen it, it's still like mind blowing. Mind blowing. And so, as you know, Frank, because I know you covered that as well. Um, a lot when you first see it, like I said, you think it's it's crazy. They're cheating, but you know, people don't realize. Like I have the mask here. You know, people don't realize it's a very thick mask. You know, and even if you have a little bit of light leaking in, like even if that's the case, you still can't see. I mean, and these kids are like playing ping pong. They're riding bikes. They're. Re I mean, it's really. And that's the thing. Sometimes people say, well, what if somebody's like in their ear telling them something? But like, how could somebody in their ear be telling them how to ride a bike or how to hit a ping pong? You can't. You know you what? Know? Also, Frankie, I remember these kids because Frankie, when did you go see them? I yeah, I went like ago, five like... or six years ago. So I Frankie went to England and then also that Utah one. And also the Utah one. So that he actually can vouch for it because he actually went and, and you've been getting more into yeah. seeing with your third eye, yeah. with your courses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I don't think you guys, you guys did them this year, but usually, you know, Frankie yeah. now is a part of, um, uh, you know, this really cool group and, and helps 
uh, people see with their third eye. So the whole thing is a trip. It's just, it's just so cool. It's crazy. And also, so because the film is scientifically based, like we wanted to bring scientific evidence, as you saw in the movie, we, the scientists, uh, the Italian scientists, you know, studied um, the brain waves when they were blindfolded. And they saw that the brain waves were as if a person was actually reading, actually seeing. So that's crazy. And the scientists and, that you're talking about for people to know is uh, they're from the University of Body in Italy. Correct. And also they put a device inside the mask and there was no light whatsoever. They could measure the light photons. Mm -hmm. So the brain cannot see without light. I mean, that's, a, and even again, the light on the side is one thing, but the light needs to be reflected on objects for you to see. And so if that's not happening, so then you wonder. And because of this, of course, the question becomes, well, can we train a blind person then to... I've yeah, I've documented that, which you've seen in Germany. Um, yes. Anyone who's interested in that, they can go also on my channel and see that. But one kid was 18 years old, Tom, fully blind, like legally blind. He's from Germany. He has a card from the government that says this person is blind. He, he uses a stick to walk. But for some reason, when he puts on the blindfold after doing this tech learning this technique, he can see like fully. And then we also did it with an older gentleman also in Germany who um, could, could play a game of pool, beat me at a game of pool, which isn't hard. <laughs> um, he lost, yeah, I lost to him, uh, but I beat him in bowling. And, um, and we played while and he's fully blind. So, I mean, you've witnessed it, I have certainly, and in the film we show so many examples. It's not just this isolated group of kids, or I mean, it's literally across the board in, the, in Utah, in Germany, in Russia, in Romania, all Mexico, part of, uh, yeah. yeah, we know groups in Mexico and, and you did India. So, I mean, this is very real. I can't speak for the people who cheat, I don't know, I don't know, I haven't covered them. Cheaters, I'm sure, and that may be yeah. rude for everybody, but. Some of it is very real. So when, since you were so close, when you watched it, Kat and Brian too, because Frank is more familiar with it, like, how did you feel? Like, what did it, what come, came up for you? Like, can I do this or what? I mean, what did you think? Well, I'd already, um, especially this year, which has been such a year of looking internally and, and, and self-reflection and how can I be my best self and um, health being such a focus and modern nirvana being such a focus. I was already exploring these subjects of what is possible, what isn't possible. Deepak's MetaHuman talks about that a lot. Yeah. So I was already really open to it. And then seeing that um, it was done with children and hearing the parents speak about it in, in such a affirmative way made me really trust it. Um, one thing I did at home, we did a whole little science project where you take uh, the piece of foil on the pen. Oh yeah. Wow. She's yeah. yeah. What is that called? Telekinesis. Yeah, I tried my little telekinesis, <laughs> you know, because I did that on television. I was able to do that every uh -huh. week. Um, can't do that anymore. So, you know, <laughs> did you do it? Lost all of my special. Oh, she's friends. believing you. She's like, wait, did you do it? <laughs> no, no, darling. Because Aww. she played a witch on TV, so she had magic. Uh, so when she the did show a lot. Ended, I don't know what happened. <laughs> no, she, she did a lot more than. Anyway, I tried things. to do it at home, but it was distracting. And then I, I, I got a couple times, but then like. Darren was like, it's the wind, but it was, um, I think I did a little bit of telekinesis. Well, when she does it, Caroline, she puts a container. I did the container. Look in the picture that you guys have posted. You'll see, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. You'll see in the left-hand side, there's a candle because we needed something for the needle to stick in. And there's a piece of foil and a big uh, topiary. What picture did we just, oh! In, the, in my meditation So if you room. go to Modern Nirvana on Instagram, what is, what's the actual handle? Modern Nirvana. Modern Nirvana. It's new. We put it's a brand yes, yeah, a brand new page, but we just posted a photo of you Kat and her meditation. You see a little incredible. influence of Caroline in my home. Oh my God! <laughs> a little piece of foil inside a topiary, and every now and again, me and the whole family put our hands on it and really try and move the foil. That's so great. So we're proud. I want to see that. You're we're, it. we're not having the best luck. So go to modern.nirvana on Instagram. On Instagram. And you'll see, and the you'll see it on the left hand side. Oh, <laughs> as soon as we hang up, I'm going there because I want to see. 
how you did it. Oh my God. This is so it might be totally wrong and maybe the glass is too thick. I don't know. But right, we paused the movie right there and scrambled up to the kitchen because we were like, we need to. That's yes, so I funny. forgot. You I never it? told you. Yeah, no, we all did it. <laughs> Everybody in the whole house. Well, now that we're talking about telekinesis, I know we're, I know we're like kind of playing a lot of the clips all at once, but can we show the people your telekinesis clip? Yeah. So uh, just again, also a little bit of intro about that. So tell, for those who don't know, telekinesis is the ability to move a physical object w without physical touch, without any physical contact. So how is that possible? You know, because I'm like such a science person or whatever. I, I, I when I see something like this, I want to know how, like, I, I want to know when, how it, it is possible according to the physical laws, you know? And so technically, if you have an object in front of you, you think you're not connected, but you are connected through the electromagnetic field. Your body emits electromagnetic field and the object is also around it. You know, there's air molecules, there's temperature. So the idea is to know how to interact for your energy field, your magnetic field to interact with the air molecules around the object oh interesting so you're not really trying to force the key to move for example you're just working with the molecules around the key exactly because actually no i mean we just taught this class online i mean and people were able to do it although it took a little time because that's the idea because psychologically too you know, things come up for you. You're like, wait, how am I going to move this object? It's outside of me. But that's really the, because like, for example, when I do an experiment with water or with DNA, it's kind of like an organic substance and it responds very quickly. But when it's a piece of paper, you're like, how is that going to, there's no connection, if you will. And so I noticed that it's the exact opposite. You focus on it. You try to move it magnetically but then you have to pull away there's no forcing it's the other way around what your intention is and then you let it happen yeah in fact you kind of i don't know but that's my experience but it, you kind of feel like as if it has an ego or something like as if it tells you okay i know what you want now you know get away i can do it on my own yeah, like, i swear you it's so like, funny you tell me you can't suffocate your manifestation yeah. Like, Kat, exactly. Kat used to tell me, like, don't force it. Like, when you're trying to manifest something, you're trying, just like, let it be known what you want and then step back and let it happen. Exactly. And the second you kind of pull back, the thing starts to rotate. And of course, in the movie, we start out, you know, with just the object. And I'm a big control. We're such freak. control freaks. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, yeah. But that, that, that's why this training is so good for you because it's not about the piece of paper or the piece of foil. It's about you, like how you want something in your life, you know, because why are we doing all, why are we learning all of this to apply to creating something in the physical world or like maybe like move, you know, to make your boyfriend go, go do the laundry or something, <laughs> you know, it's like the same sort of principle. <laughs> where you can, yeah, the same sort of principle where you learn how to connect with the f physical object or the physical world, and then you pull away, and then you observe it happen. And so, and of course, in the film, then eventually we do it with glass, then two pieces of glass. And then remotely. Then I did it remotely. And that's like crazy, because not only remotely, but also under vacuum. Vacuum means no air molecules yeah. no temperature change very little and and so that is where you go okay there's a phenomenon going on here and it's consciousness so let's let's show people yeah, how to do it. yeah. very cool i can't wait to see cats uh, doing telekinesis there's no way <laughs> I saw a movie that changed my life and I had this like very life-changing experience where I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to perform, I want to act, I want to inspire people just like that film did for me through 
focusing on that, intending it, writing it down, having vision boards, like seeing it, watching it every day, seeing myself do it every day. I ended up playing the lead in the sequel to that same film six years later, something that everybody told me was impossible. Where you place your awareness is where energy goes. As maybe silly to some as this may sound, sending love to the material, saying like, you know, I love you, like, let's work together on this, let's be one, you know, let's move together. Look what it's doing as you're talking about love. Your heart's opening as you're yeah. talking about it, and it feels it. And I can also feel whenever I start to feel those ego thoughts or wanting to get it right or afraid of failure, then there's this disconnect. Um, and I think that's so powerful to understand that that's the whole thing of ego. It's like the want to get it right is can block you. But when you just allow and, and be filled with love and energy, like amazing, miraculous things can happen. Ah. So awesome. She was, Kat was just showing us the photo of her yeah, trying she it. She definitely did it. Oh, I want to see it. Hey, send it to yeah, me. Text well, it's on the meditation room. <laughs> I want to see that. Um, so yeah, so you heard what she says. It was mind blowing. Um, this is Rachel Brooksmith. She's also, she, so she had never done anything like this before. Right. And so in context, she's an actress who you asked to come do this with you because you wanted somebody who's never done it to show how quickly you could teach somebody. Exactly. And don't forget, we're filming, right? We have like six cameras. Yeah. We have a yeah. bunch of people around. We have lighting. Speaking of electromagnet, you know, stuff. She's that like in a space where there's like a lot going on around her. Yeah. So it's hard to focus and concentrate. And so in two hours, we teach her and she nails it. And uh, that was the takeaway is that she was trying so hard and nothing was happening. And the second she, she started to talk about love it was it was crazy the second she says love the thing started to rotate mm. that's so crazy wow it's so interesting so i'm so interested in how people get into this where like what was like the catalyst mm. for you that you decided that you wanted to be a superhuman explorer. Like, what <laughs> <That's a pretty laughs> uh, like, happened? It was like a near death experience. Like, what, what was the switch? Well, so for me, actually, it started when I was very young. I was five years old. And I realized that I could look at people and I could see the subtle energy all around them. I could see the subtle energy in space. So I knew what was wrong with them, what was going to heal them, what was going to happen to them the next day. I could see what was on the other side of the wall. Um, I would hear things and then they'd be on the radio the next day. So I was already kind of having these experiences spontaneously and as a kid growing up. But then, I mean, I didn't think it was anything special. I was like, oh, everybody does that. It's not a big deal. So I never talked about it, but I was always intrigued how how because later i realized wait well i knew what this person needed to heal but they didn't know so right. i could see something that they couldn't see and so i wanted to understand the the mechanics of it so i got into the field of consciousness mm. what consciousness is how does it work um, you know, in college, I studied psychology, but that didn't cut it. It was like not even close. And so, and I developed a whole methodology for energy medicine, like for healing and for remote, you know, seeing things uh, across <laughs> the universe, stuff like that. And I trained. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, just moving things around. Yeah, like yeah, just moving things around. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and then I trained people like thousands of people around the world, you know, who then could do this. And so, and we were getting validation, meaning, okay, this person had this problem. And then the next day, the x-ray shows it's gone. The blood test shows it's gone. And so it's validation after validation after validation that at one point we're like, okay, we're not crazy. This is real. And we need to kind of do something about it so scientific like i mean to show that this is a real phenomenon and so i got together with some scientists 
And uh, I started doing all kinds of experiments. Like, well, can you do it with water? Well, can you do it on a, can you like, a, you know, do something with the computer? Can you do something with the electric electrical device or whatever? Right. And then can you do it, I was in LA, they're in Northern California. Well, can you do it remotely? Can you move an object? So that's kind of how it started. And then it was working. It was like, oh my God, you know, this is real. And um, just for people to know, when we do a scientific experiment, we don't just like look at water and intend for it, whatever, and then we take a measurement. It's not like that. I mean, scientifically, we, we measure it for a long time. It's called a baseline. So we take a baseline for a long time. We, we measure it over and over and over and over. So we have that reference point. And then exactly at the time where you're focusing on it, it jumps. And then you when you see what's funny about that? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And then the minute you stop looking at it, it goes back. And then we do it again and again. So that's how we know scientifically that it is you. It's not some crazy thing. Well, what's interesting about that is um, my mom, and it's, this is like an ancient thing, you know, like in the Lebanese mountains. Um, yeah. They do this, like obviously not in Beirut, like a big city, but like in the mountains and stuff where they're still connected with like their, you know, the the old rituals. If I had, if I ever had a headache or we were feeling sick or we had, you know, they would call it like the third eye. I mean, the, uh, what is it? The evil eye or anything like that. They would, they would give us a little bit of water just like this. They would pray over it seven times and then we would drink it. And it was insane because we would instantly feel better. And we're so Americanized that me, my brother, my sister were like, oh, this is so silly. Like when we were kids, we're like, mom, give me a Tylenol. I don't want you to pray over water. My head hurts. Give me Tylenol, you know? But then we, after a while, we realized it works. And so we, that, you know, we kept doing that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we don't realize, we think it's like woo-woo stuff, but it's not. I mean, in fact, there are many scientists who did experiments with water. You know, William Tiller, famous physicist, he did, he had a group of people yeah. focus on water to change the pH. And it was like going up or down the way you wanted it to. And then there's a book, The Hidden Messages in Water, which right. is like, exactly. oh, the, the water, yeah. the messages, affirmations in the water were negative or positive. And yeah. so that was right. And just for everybody, Everybody watching music, just for everybody watching too, who uses a microwave, my mom used to always be like, don't use a microwave, it's bad, it's bad. And she's so right. That book, The Hidden Messages in Water, it's, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm screaming in her ear. <laughs> in that book, The Hidden Messages in Water, um, they actually uh, heat, so they, they take a picture of the water and it has these beautiful crystals. They put it in a microwave and it had, it becomes the same shape that it would if you just kept saying the word Satan over the water. What are you talking yes. about? Yes. Read the book. They did it in a scientific lab. Okay. Oh, you read the book. I did not. But, read yeah. But it's really the one about. that you're talking about, the crystal. <laughs> We're going to come back. <laughs> but it's so true, you know. So well, every time my roommate puts something in the microwave, I'm like, you're literally putting Satan consciousness into your food. Okay. We're gonna oh my God. That's not an official modern Nirvana statement. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's from not. the book. I'm just it's saying. It's from his book. He's referencing. I'm book. referencing a book, The Hidden Messages in Water. Oh my God. I love my little microwave. You do use a microwave? <laughs> you're a vegan. I'm an amazing chef, but sometimes a girl's got to go. I don't have time. <laughs> okay, I'll make sure that I'm not putting Satan in my microwave. Sorry, um, back to your movie. No, 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 it's all good. This is all, okay, but we'll take, we'll extract that frequency from our conversation. <laughs> no, but I I understand your point, though. The thing is, yeah, this is not woo-woo stuff. There are many experiments that were done with water, with food, with grains of rice. You've seen that before. Yeah, yeah they just mentioned that earlier. I was talking over them, but they said grains of rice. <laughs> Say you imagine you pull out your burrito from the microwave and you just say I know. <laughs> I'm vegan, so I'm like, did you say say tan? Say tan? <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. Um, do you? Yeah. You want to? Do we have? Can we watch one more clip? Do you want to intro the next clip? Yeah. Well, the the other one, uh, the other experiment we did was remote viewing. Yeah. And I thought I really wanted to do that because, um, as you know, many people have a feeling that something happened. Mothers feel that their daughter or whatever, their son, something happened to them on the other side of the planet. Like, where are they picking up the information from? Uh, yeah. 
you know, you, you see things ahead of time. So this is so common that people, of course, they right away dismiss it as synchronicity or whatever, whatever you know, but it's very real. It's very, very real. In fact, um, the during the Cold War, the U.S. government started a program called the Stargate program. And uh, it actually was the Russian that started it. And that's and the, the U.S. found out about it and they said, wait, 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 we need to be doing this. <laughs> yeah. And so they started this program and basically they were um, training soldiers to remote view to basically spy on the Russians remotely. So they would teach them how to look at, for example, their, uh, you know, their army base or their missiles and how they're moving things around. But it was so successful. I know um, that some soldiers were able to actually read documents that were, you know, in some officers, officers or something like that. And so, they ran this program for like 20 years, spending millions and millions of dollars, which tells you that it was working, that this was real. Mm -hmm. And so, so to me, that was validation that, you know, you know, they wouldn't be doing this if, if there wasn't something actually going on. And so, of course, um, many people can remote view. And, uh, and I, so that's the reason why I wanted to include it and bring some, some scientific explanation to that as well. Well, it's funny because when, we, when I saw your video, your movie, and you and I were on the phone, I think, once. And when we hung up, I was like, how do I know she's not, like, spying on me right now? <laughs> Or if I like, if I like, don't answer your call. I'm like, how, she's gonna be like, I know he's at home. <laughs> I, I mean, don't laugh, but it's true. You can do that. <laughs> but don't we you have can... to be willing to like receive the thought? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That so that was another very interesting thing that happened. So, uh, but yeah. Side note: you guys can use this to spy on your boyfriends. So, <laughs> you gotta do that, girl. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, right. No, but seriously, I mean, technically, yes, you can, because that's the idea you can see, but you don't see them like necessarily like doing stuff. You, you more, you see more of the energy and you have an idea, but that's not the thing. Like what Brian is asking now, can you on the other side feel that somebody is tapping into your energy and block it? Sure. Absolutely. I think so. Yeah. I've done it with yeah. psychics. I've done that with a psychic. Yeah. So I'm, Go ahead. I'm actually interested because I practice this a, a little bit and Frank reads my mind all the time, at least four times a day. We have like just that very unique relationship, but the way we practice it is we become one another and then we mm. practice receiving, one sending, and then we practice reading each other's minds, right? And then we do it from a distance. It's a system that we do and it definitely works. You guys did not show your system during the filming. Was there a reason yeah. for that? And what was it? Yeah. So there are actually several systems. What you talked about is the merging process, yes. which is also what I teach because you're basically merging two consciousness. And if you are merged, then you know exactly what the other person is doing and feeling, right? Mm -hmm. but so, so the government, the way they talk is very different. In fact, when I tried their technique, it kind of messed me up because uh, they base it on the idea that your subconscious mind is receiving information from everywhere that you're tapped into a unified field and it's just coming to you yeah so so when so the way we you train the way they teach it is that um you say okay well i want to those coordinates in russia whatever whatever and then you let your subconscious mind just like give you information. So all of a sudden you see metal, you see buildings, you see trees, you see a lake, you know, and you just basically write down everything. Mm -hmm. That's one technique, very different than what I do. Uh, so my technique is very similar to yours, I think, where you basically, you're not out of body, but you extend your consciousness beyond your body mm -hmm. and you go, you travel through time space through a specific grid point which lands to where you are, okay? I don't have to know, you don't have to give me your address, but I can find your frequency, you know? And so, and once I'm on the other side, my consciousness is now, it's like as if, you know, I'm a, the observer and I can see what's going on. So that's one, th another technique. 
Or if I merge with you, usually we do this technique for healing. Yeah. Because, because you want to know what the creating activation process, they merge with the person they're working on. Exactly. So I have a video on that. Yeah, thanks. Covered it. Yeah. So that, that's a technique that I also use, but then you have to know exactly what you're doing because you don't want to pick up their stuff. You want to be clear. Are you making this up? Or if you start to feel, for example, when I merge with somebody, like I start to feel like I'm suffocating or whatever, or so, because it's not mine, it's theirs. So to know how to interpret, yes. you know, is this mine? Is it theirs? What do I say? What is this about? So there's a bit of training with that. You can ask the energy that you're feeling in your body, is this mine? Or is it someone else's, correct? Exactly. Or before you begin. Okay. There are specific protocols where the second I'm merged, everything I feel is about them. Interesting. So in the middle, you don't have to like go back and forth. I'm, and I'm really interested in this stuff. How do you um, rebalance or reground besides like a shower or breath work or something after a second like that? I'm sure people are going to know energetically so so because you've you've expended your consciousness and you merge with them yeah. and you're picking up all kinds of stuff so it's kind of like an agreement that you have before so from that point it's all theirs and then once i pull back uh i'm completely it's like you sever an, an energetic cord right. completely like you come back in your bubble and none of their frequency comes comes back with you so there's also like an energetic cleanse also that i do it's uh, with the meditate it's like a seven minutes long i'm gonna send you all the remote viewing stuff it's my gift to you um oh, you'd like to try and the energy and the energy medicine technique it's very yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's not so simple. It's very, I want to say sophisticated because we use light, color, reprogramming, DNA, gravity pull, you know, zero point. It's very like, because it's case by case. I don't, you don't do one thing to everybody yeah, yeah. in the same way. I love that, Caroline, um, because I'm such a big fan of like introducing all these different modalities to people because some people might be more inclined to do some healing practice more than the other. You know, because I'm very energy based. So when I figured out those things, I was like, this came naturally to me. So whoever's viewing, you know, keep searching for the thing that comes natural to you. So Caroline, before we um, show any of uh, the next clip, the remote viewing, somebody here, uh, their username is EST111. They're asking uh, to Caroline and Modern Nirvana, what is the biggest block to bringing this into the classroom to teach young people, teens and kids? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the resistance of, is this real? And what is the implication? Like, are we going to have kids running around, knowing things, feeling things? I think there's that fear base still going on. But honestly, that's why I made the film now. Because mm -hmm. I feel like it's enough already. I mean, this is the right time. We should stop kind of uh, apologizing for us being superhuman which everybody is love that yes you know and stop like pretending like this is not real and stop pretending that this is not scientific and stop you know and kind of making excuses you know that we have to be small and limited and be called woo woo and this and that so that's why i'm like let's be out there let's teach and those who don't want to come along. I, I think it's, it is what it is, you know, it's like just, so, so that's why I'm starting to teach all this, which I didn't before the telekinesis, the, the remote viewing, I'm, it's part of the healing. So we've been doing that, but the telekinesis, the spoon bending, the blindfolds. And I think people are more receptive than we think. So yeah. if there's still a block, of course, there's always people who are going to have a block, but I think we need to just be out there and do it. And Frank, you work with so many kids that do do this, you know, as a practice daily. What are, what are their personalities? Or Well, the interesting thing is, and I saw in your clip that you played in the very beginning, you spoke to Angela, the mother from yes. England, and she said that she's like, you know, her she's blown away that her son can do this. But she says... Um, the fact that he can see while blindfolded is such a small part of what this teaching has actually done for him. Mm -hmm. She says he's more confident. He's outgoing. He had a lot of father issues that just went away. He like learned to like love and accept his father. And I mean, there was so much that was beyond just being able to remote view. 
Exactly. And you know, when I was talking to them too, I don't know if you spoke to Justin at the time, but the seven-year-old, oh my God, this kid is like, he tells me like, uh, I said, well, uh, how are you seeing Justin? And he'll be like, well, of course I can see because energy is everywhere. I yeah. am everywhere. Yeah. And he'll, they'll be saying like, I remember the planet I came from. I remember my past lives. I can see Jesus and talk to him anytime. Yeah. I mean, and it's not like, you know how people think, oh, they're kids, they talk. That, that's not true. You can feel, right, Frank? You can feel. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, like the, little, the ones I met there, I didn't meet Justin. I met, I think her name was Emily and then the boy, Sunny. And yeah, it's just like, they're so beyond their age. And she's like, oh yeah, I just call in the light and the light helps me see. And I'm just like, so matter of fact. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so that's why I think we need to just, kind of do it and uh but just to finish off real quick something that you mentioned brian because it's so important uh another part of the fear is that how does that affect affect me like how do i know someone's not doing this to me well guess what i mean energy is being transferred anyway whether we like it or not whether we feel it or not whether we know it or not you go to costco you come out you have a few attachments on you it is that's the nature of who we are. So you might as well realize that this is happening and how you can keep your body and your energy clean as opposed to pretend like it's not even real. So Someone's asking if we have a website. It's modern-nirvana.com. So modern-nirvana.com. Yeah. I'll put that in the, I think it actually might already be in the description of this video, by the way. And yeah, there, a lot of really fun things we're working on. So definitely if you subscribe to the newsletter, you guys will be the first to get certain really cool things. So, mm -hmm. you know, but we are we are a new company and we're really excited. It's weird to say company because we're all just friends I know, that are we're really just friends excited and... to explore the unknown. So thank you, Caroline, for exploring with us. Oh my God, I'm thrilled to come to, co to come together with you. And Lori's here with us. She's monitoring the questions as well on the Facebook. Uh, and wherever you are, we're broadcasting on several. Oh, at modern-nirvana.com. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so please make sure you read in the comments. As she's listening to us, she's also putting that information um, in the comments. So very, very cool. And so should we show people the remote viewing clip? Yeah, let's do this one. Cool. Awesome. So cool. Oh my gosh, this is blowing my mind. Like I mean, this is insane. Lights, I wrote down lights. <laughs> And I literally thought there's Christmas lights and I said decorative lights in the front and a whole building and said it's a structure that's unleveled. Like I am mind blown right now. Oh my God. Really? Like I, I, I can't believe it. Like what I literally can't believe it. So what, what happened? Well, first of all, one of the biggest things that I picked up on was decorative lights. Like I literally wrote like Christmas lights, decorative lights. And that's a Christmas tree. That's a Christmas tree. And right here you can see I wrote lights, Christmas decorative. The first thing I did yeah. is I walked all the way to the Christmas tree. I kept saying this like kind of reddish color and obviously like all the buildings. A red. A red. Amazing. <laughs> uh, but I also said, remember the circular thing that's the carousel? I said there's this red feeling that's like almost like a circular feeling. This was a crash course yes. in just a few <laughs> hours and you've yeah. never been here before. What did you learn about yourself? I think it just reconfirmed for me the belief that we have so much more capabilities than we think we do, you know, and that I think if you can have an open mind and learn and try new things, uh, I mean, who knows what you'll be capable of, especially after this experience, if we could all live just in more curiosity, not mm -hmm. trying so hard, but just being curious about life and about our abilities, I feel like we could achieve so much more as well as just experience and enjoy life mm -hmm. so much more. that so good. Oh, so good. <laughs> one thing we were just saying also is that what it left out and you guys could see if you watch the full documentary which i highly recommend 
is that before Rachel, who we just saw, goes to the carnival, she's in a laboratory. Um, she's in his office, not in a laboratory. Is she, is, yeah, yeah in office. office. I couldn't remember. And she is, um, she's like writing down notes of what, she, of what she's seeing from where you are, Caroline. Correct. This is called an outbounder experiment. So where you go somewhere and she tries to just pick up the information. Like I said, this is part of the military program. And so she was seeing like round things. I was touching bars and she would be like seeing bars and, uh, you know, and it was incredible because actually um, we shot this in Utah. And because this is where the location was and the, the Paul was located there anyway. And we flew uh, Rachel the night before from Los Angeles. So, you know, Utah is very different than Los Angeles. And so yeah. she flies in like at 11 p.m. And the next morning she's on set. So it's like she didn't have time, you know, to look around or to have an idea what the scenery looks like or anything. And so that's why, to me, this feels so credible because she had no frame of reference. LA looks very, very, she, we could have been at McDonald's mm -hmm. for all she knows, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was pretty oh, good. At one point she saw a Starbucks cup. Oh my God. This you have to stop by Starbucks before the shoot. <laughs> this is incredible. This also is validation that this was real. So just that, I mean, um, people really need to see this. This is incredible. So technically we were, uh, Paul told us, when you go to the location, you go straight to the location because her consciousness is going to try to tap into you and we want her, whatever. Right. So anyway, we were driving, right? And we had been shooting like all day. And I was like, with the crew, I was like, I'm dying for a Starbucks, you guys. <laughs> Can we just like stop at a Starbucks, just something? And they said, well, Paul told us we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to. I said, well, we'll put a shield around us. And then if there's like, if there's nobody, like we'll do a drive through. And of course there's nobody, right? So we just zip through the thing and I get my Starbucks and then we go to the location and we're doing this, right? And then at one point, uh, Rachel, so she's saying, I see round things, I see a carousel, I see Caroline doing this. And I, and I don't know why, but I feel like hot drink. Like I feel like hot drinks. And Paul is telling her, this is your imagination. Just write it on the side on a piece of paper because your mind's gonna play tricks on you. And she's like, okay, but I don't know, I'm gonna write Starbucks, but I, I know it's a, I mean, it was crazy insane. And uh, so when she came to the set, I mean, to where we were, um, she said, I don't know, I had this idea and we were, were cracking up because she picked it up. I mean, which yeah. told us that she the ether is really, really powerful. You can really go down some serious rabbit holes with that. Yeah, and even yeah. like the beginning steps are like what we've experienced over the years. I mean, it's gotten way deeper than that now, but like you think of somebody and then they call you the next day or that day, you know, somebody you haven't talked to in a long time. Yeah, see something you in know? a dream. I yeah. mean, all of the world's knowledge is on the internet. We can access that. Why is it not somewhere else? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, this is, like I said, so this film, like you saw, you know, it's like more and more validation that what we think is invisible is not there is actually there's all kinds of stuff being transferred and transferred into our being mm -hmm. and therefore we are also tapping into all of this knowledge tapping into all this information all the time so that's the wrote, so it's so worth the watch i had to buy it talking yeah, about yes, your documentary. i loved it it's obviously i loved it so movie. much i tried my own little experiments at home but now i have more information I will be going back home and using and trying my telekinesis. I can't wait. Again. <laughs> Merging I want to see the next post the before and after. But, you know, again, because we're teaching this now. So, you know, I'll send you those links. Okay. The private I'm, read. I'm more inspired to do it. I'll send it to all of you. It's my gift. And so there's telekinesis. There's spoon bending, you know, like. That's my favorite. Because this whole, this whole thing really started when I watched. Is that you today? Oh, this whole thing. I mean, what? this is like <laughs> from the Matrix. Remember? Oh yeah. I know that this is from Delphi Temple. I yeah, 
originally know oh. thyself it's from okay so i don't need anyone to educate me right, in the right. comment section i know where it's not from the matrix it was like okay thank you for that <laughs> <laughs> The matrix inspired me to get it is from the Oracle's kitchen. And my favorite quote is there is no spoon. You cannot bend nice. the spoon. That's impossible. Mm. And it's only you that is actually bending. So that's. Yes. The key. It's all the reason. Yeah. And, and the thing is, again, yeah, because basically the training, I mean, we're using the spoon, we're doing the piece of foil, we're doing the mat. It's not about the spoon or the foil. It's yeah. about what you discover as you're doing this, you discover, oh my God, the resistance. Oh my God, the mind chatter. Oh my God, you know. Uh, so, so you learn about your consciousness and what, how you are interacting with the physical world because then you can apply it to the real life. So for example, just like you focus on water to change the pH, now we have this corona thing going on and we have this all kinds of stuff. So can we start using the way you did it on the water? Now redo it on your stomach, on your body, on you see. So that's that's the real point of all of this, you know. Yeah. People are asking if they can ask questions. I mean, we've yeah. been asking questions the whole time, so feel free. So Lori, yeah, Lori's here with us. So she, can you? Did you pick up? So she was supposed to be monitoring all the Facebook pages and everything else. Do you have any questions for any one of us? Yes, I do have a couple that came over. So the first one is from Millie. She wants to ask Kat a question. She wants to know, has she ever manifest? Has oh, she God. ever manifested? Oh, what? Manifesting. That's like her thing. That's I love manifesting. Um, I think it's really important, though, to ask yourself who you are and what you want and then not come from such a materialistic place, but from a place of love and being of service and then ask yourself who you are and what you want. Mm -hmm. um, because I think as humans with our different, um, our different sensibilities, things that we've picked up along the way on this journey, we think that the, the wealth and the cars and the big houses and the fame and the, you know, press and stuff is actually what matters, but that's actually a big trick. Um, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's an illusion. It's not, that's not where you're going to find your peace or your happiness or your worth. So you have to be very careful when it comes to manifesting um, because it, it, it should come from, you know, you manifesting for your, highest good when your highest good is also what you can do for other people so make sure that you come from it from a place of what you're going to offer the world versus what you want to take from it which if you're taking the wrong things then you're going to confuse um your possible soul's purpose to help raise the consciousness of the world so just be a manifestation is absolutely there's so many different ways to do it and different um frequencies vibrations sounds I do Wayne Dyer's, it's really great. But just before you manifest, get to know yourself and your your inner being and your and consciousness better. Meditate more, pray more, spend time with God, read more. And and then manifest from a place of, of awareness. That's what I would recommend. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because, because the real frequency behind your asking is what you're going to get. So if you're coming from a place of ego or a place of selfishness or, or greed, yeah. then that's really what you're going to get. I always yeah. say your vibration is your destiny. And the way you I take care that. of it is pretty well. I yeah. love that. Love that. Your voice has an incredible vibration, my dear. Yeah. So what else, uh, um, Laurie? <laughs> Lyra, she wants to know: Can anyone practice superhuman abilities? Who is the question for? It's for everyone. Uh, they're nodding. Bryant, please. Yes, and I was going to touch on this earlier. One of the things I took away from Frank's YouTube videos was that these kids had these supernatural abilities more did than not, almost. And the reason why they lost along the way is because us as adults stuck in our patterning blinded to what's possible, we say that they actually didn't see what they did. And they get imprinted on that way and it hinders them from actually believing in their own natural ability to do these superhuman feats, which is just a natural ability and yeah. that we all have the capability to do so. Yeah. So 
Yeah, and like I said, for me, I, I started when I was five years old. And um, I, di I didn't think it was anything. I, I thought like, I, I actually people say, well, did you tell your friends? Did you tell your parents? I didn't tell anybody because I was embarrassed. Like, what if I told them and they'll be like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. So because I really thought and I felt that this is just part of being human like and then of course uh, i mean as we grow up we forget and we are told not to but that's exactly what i want to do with this film is and that's why i wanted to invite all kinds of people because everybody can do this anybody can do this and so that's what i'm really hoping people will take away from from this film you know so cool. And what else, Lori? Another one for everyone. Catherine would like to know: Would this be suitable for a young teen? Uh, I would say even more suitable. The yeah. You are. Yeah. Like right under the age of twelve, you haven't developed your logical brain as strongly. So what we've seen, or what definitely what I've seen in my videos, and they've seen them, is that young people pick it up like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I can elaborate. And you know, with the with the blindfolds too, Frank. Uh, the kids like in two. So we just taught a class online, and because we've never done it, as you know, you're supposed to be with in person and online. After two classes, the kids were reading and doing puzzles blindfolded. Wow. So this, is, but the adults is a different story. Yeah, the blindfold a longer, just because, like what you're saying, the analytical mind. It still yeah. works. Adults can do it, obviously. It just takes more work. Awesome. And, and just to expand on what you're saying, which is a great point, you know, you want to, children really have an openness that we as adults spend our time trying to get back to, um, you know, the spiritual ones. But what I've seen a lot, is, especially in my following, um, which is pretty, you know, a lot of young girls, they are seeking a lot of external validation from celebrities they don't know, um, Instagram, um, you know, needing to have this kind of artificial connection, artificial validation. And what I've been trying to, to express to them is that it's it's that's not what's what needs to be relevant to you. What needs to be relevant to you is your relationship with yourself, your relationship with your own self-worth, not looking externally for answers, literally looking within, putting the blindfold on, looking within and asking yourself the questions of who am I, what do I want, how do I connect to consciousness, how do I help the world? So I'm hoping that everyone on this chat right now understands that this is about consciousness and raising the elevation and becoming superhuman and watching the doc and about modern nirvana. This is not about celebrity. This is not about seeking celebrity validation. That's not cute to me. That's not why we're here. Mm. Don't ask those questions. Yes. Look inside. There's just you know? a place for everything. There is a place for everything. And this is about self-empowerment, self-awareness, awakening your inner eye, you know, and I really want to encourage my young girls to, to place their own worth, their own time and their own value above anyone else. I love that. They, yeah. Oh my God, I love that. I can feel the energy from your heart. It's mm. so beautiful. That's it's amazing. Love yeah. it. You are your own best teacher. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's what we're, it, this is what this is about. It's about understanding you and awakening your uh, your own abilities, your own creativity, really, because that's how we're supposed to create your reality based on those principles. I love it. Amazing. So beautiful. And what else, Laurie? So again, for those who, you know, we have people from all over, actually. We have a big crowd from um, the Netherlands and France and uh, Europe, but also um, obviously the US and Australia. And so we're on several channels. If you haven't done so yet, you must subscribe. You must subscribe <laughs> to uh, Modern Nirvana YouTube, um, my YouTube channel. It's free of charge, by the way. It's free, and we're bringing all this wealth of uh, knowledge to you. So, and also the website, your website um, is in the chat box. We're going to say it again modern dot modern dash nirvana dash dot com modern-nirvana.com uh, and the film is superhumanfilm.com. Cool. So and, awesome new questions. 
Yeah, yeah. you're reading more questions? There's just a lot. I mean, let's do one more and then we and then we'll probably should end it here. Okay. Uh, someone was asking, oh, there's a couple, but there was somebody asking if there are classes in New Zealand. I know in my class that I had last year in Germany, somebody from New Zealand came from there because they didn't he couldn't find anything in New Zealand. Right, but you're going to do another course. Yeah, soon, we right? wanted to this year unfortunately, you know, we had right. to cancel, but hopefully next year. And if you guys subscribe, you'll you'll be the first ones to to be able to get tickets for that because we have to keep those you have to keep those classes pretty Yeah, intimate, pretty right? small cuz we want to make sure everybody gets yeah, one on one. So, so 15 to 30 people tops. And these are the courses where you can actually learn how to use your program. Yeah. Just as well. And uh so you're not doing stuff online because of um, I tried it for a little bit. It's like you said, it's easier. It's 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 way more effective in person, way more effective. Yeah. So, I mean, we got a lot of great responses for the online one, and I might bring it back, especially if everything stays this way. But I really enjoy the in-person ones and meeting people who have yeah. um, wanted to do this since they started watching the channel in, like, 2015. And, and now they're like, wow, I can't believe you're finally doing this, and we can learn it. And, you know, yeah. so I like that interaction. Yeah. That exchange. I want to take your course. Yeah, I want you guys to come. It. I can't wait. I'd love to, to see with time. with um with my third eye because yeah. I'm pretty clumsy with my eyes open. So hopefully <laughs> this will help out. Yeah, and, and it's the third eye, but it's also you activate your brain also in a different oh, your way. Your brain hurts. You know this, right, yeah. Caroline? I forgot about that. But when you're taking the course all week, your brain is fried. Like they know <laughs> I, I can't take naps. I don't take naps. And when I when I took this third eye course. I would get home, we'd be done by like 4 p.m. and I would crash, on, I would lay in bed and crash for the rest, until the next morning. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, people don't realize that even an hour of training is so hard uh, for the trainer, you know, and everybody. So no, this is real work. But uh, again, even though some people sometimes ask, okay, so if it's our innate ability, why do we have to train? You know, it's like starting a new workout, like, how are you supposed to get there? You have to train. Oh, you told you that you heard. It's never been, you never see it. Like it's not, it's not something people do walking around. So it's like a weird thing and your brain doesn't even know it can do that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and you've never done it your entire life. And all of a sudden, so there's a little bit of training and a little bit of discipline, but then because it's your innate ability, then it's almost like it kicks in, you activate something and then it, it works. Cool. Yeah. Lori, do you have anything else for us? Last question. Let's do it. Yeah, last one. Make it good. Yeah. Alan Frank was like, that was the last one, so I was holding up. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Caroline, we do have one question for you, which is, how did you find people to be in the film? Oh, I'm always recruiting, by the way. Uh, so for the next film, I'm looking. <laughs> if you are one of those, make sure that you uh, contact me. But yeah, so I, if it's people, the experts and the scientists, I already knew who they were. And so I contacted those who were relevant to this field and to the experiments that we were going to do. But for the actual participants who could demonstrate abilities, uh, it was whoever kind of fell into my lap, I feel like it's whoever I happened to find that I felt were real, credible. I just said, hey, you you know, please come along. And like I said, I'm still looking. So well, there's gonna be superhuman, you know, uh, part two, part three, because there's the, yeah. And also if you're out there wondering if you have those abilities, there's an ESP app that I use. That's really mm -hmm. good on ESP app and it tests you. And if you score a certain amount above, it'll send your results to someone that will then come find you, which is pretty cool. Oh, why? Yeah. Yeah. I invented it. I yeah, why. so if you're an expert, if you are, or if you wanna be part of an experiment, you know, I'm always looking. We, you guys, we should do a movie together at some point. Yeah. <laughs> on the next subject, yeah. we'll have to find something interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, so this is great. Uh, did you, did you, go ahead. Thank you so much. Truly. Oh my God. I, I am so grateful for you coming together. I can't wait to see what you guys are going to come up with, with modern Nirvana and the type of work uh, you're going to be offering and the YouTube channel, how that's going to grow. So I'm so looking forward. I'm so appreciative for recognizing 
you know what the film was about. We love and, it. Right yeah. up our alley. We would have watched it anyways, even yeah. just as friends and been telling each other about it. So everyone that's watching, uh, please, please check it out. It's a super, super enlightening film. I am so, so, so grateful for this time together. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much, you guys. Bye, and everybody who's watching, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in.